a different view, a different angle. New adventurers arriving at the third stage of the Green Dragon Slayer would probably be shocked on how the camera is angled, especially when they are so used to 2.5 dimension view. But don't fret. It is actually an advantage because you can totally focus on watching the boss's movement. Ruins of Bravery is all about focus and dodging. And like every past stages of the Dragon Slayer, the main key in finishing this stage is to understand the skills of the boss and when the boss will unleash it. Okay, let's start. The first rule of any stage is to wait the whole party to completely load before moving forward and trigger the battle. This is important because right after the boss appears, it will unleash its first skill, the Poison Wave. Well, it's a wave of poison wall that moves from the boss's mouth going to the back of the map. Just dodge forward when the wave is about to hit your character and you will be safe. The poison wave will be unleashed again later on in the game. If you're going to position your character near the boss, you will have to watch for its face to know if it's going to unleash the poison wave. If you see that it's about to spit something, that's it. Be mindful though, the boss will also do the same face gesture before it unleashes its poison ball skill. Anyone hit by the poison ball will have reverse control. That means moving your d-pad forward will make your character move backwards. Just seize the poison ball by dodging it before it touches your character. So again, if the boss's face looks like it's gonna spit something, it's either poison wave or poison ball skill. Let's go back to the start. As I have said, the moment the battle starts, it will unleash the poison wave. It will then be followed by the Poison Ball. After that sequence, the boss will use either of these three skills. The Headbutt, the Poison Screen, and the Poison Geysers. Let's discuss it one by one. The Headbutt is when the boss smashes its head on the ground multiple times. There will be a small red circle warning around the boss before it does it. So just walk away from the boss to avoid the damage. For the Poison Screen, it's easy to identify because the boss will be shaking. It will also be obvious because of the poison energy being collected by the boss. After 3 seconds, the boss will scream throwing all the collected poison energy in shape of a tornado. When the tornado hits your character, your character will be tossed backwards and will lose control for a second or two. This poison scream tornado could be countered just dodge forward and penetrate the tornado. And then we have the poison geysers. Multiple geysers will appear on the ground that will eject turbulent poison upwards. Once hit, your character could be stuck at the top of the turbulence and lose control. It's also easy to dodge if you know when and where it will appear. You will know that the boss will unleash the geysers if it shakes his head. Well, it could be similar to the Poison Scream gesture, only this time without the poison energy being collected. The geysers form either of the two patterns each time they are unleashed. The first one is in a form of an inverted V, while the other one is in a form of letter T. You will know which form the geysers will take by the red floor warning. If there's no red warning, it will take the V form, otherwise it will take the T form. However, it will be a quick warning, so timing is very important. But some players prefer to stand to the left side of the front right stone wall, because it will be easy to dodge either form of the geysers from that point. Oh, by the way, the V form is always first to be unleashed, then the boss alternately use the T form every time. Any of these 5 skills could be repeated by the boss until you reach the times 4 bar of the boss's HP. On times 4, 6 platforms will appear on the map behind each of the 6 stone walls. After 1 to 2 seconds, the boss will release a quick poison creep above the ground. Players that will be hit will have reverse control. It's totally possible to dodge it, but it would need 
practice for the timing. Anyway, whether your control is reversed or not, your character has to step on the platform within 6 seconds. After the 6 second clock expires, the boss will unleash its ultimate skill called Petrifying Ray that could instantly kill a character not stepping on the platform. Except of course those characters that has an activated invincibility skills. If anybody gets killed by the Petrifying Ray, the boss will unleash another Poison Crypt on the ground 1-2 to two seconds after the platform disappears. The Poison Crypt this time will deal burst damage, so watch out for it if somebody in your party dies because of the ultimate skill. After the first ultimate skill, the boss will use the 5 skills that we've discussed a while ago in a random sequence. But there's one new skill that will be added to the list. Let's just call it Ground Slap Shockwave because I don't know what's the best name for it. It's also easy to dodge because the whole map will have the red floor warning. So once you see the whole map becomes red, dodge quickly. When the HP drops at times 2, the boss will activate its underground demon tentacles. A tentacle will randomly appear on the map one at a time. After a second, a circular red floor warning will appear around the tentacle. And then after another second, the tentacle will swipe around the circular area counterclockwise causing damage to anyone that will be hit. To give you an idea, the coverage of the tentacle is almost half of the map. Well, to resist, dodge right after you see the red floor warning. The challenge starts here because the boss will continue unleashing skills while making sure that there's no tentacle that will hit you. A tentacle will appear every after 10 seconds until the boss dies. The challenge does not end there yet. Because at the end of times one bar of HP, the boss will start to cast its Venom Bomb skill. Stop it by dealing a lot of continuous damage to the boss. The blue bar at the bottom of the screen will indicate your progress. If the casting is not stopped within 10 seconds, the Venom Bomb will be unleashed. It will cover that whole map and could wipe out your whole team. Otherwise, just continue dealing damage to the boss until the boss dies. Just watch out for its skills and the tentacles appearing on the ground. That's it. Now I have some more tips to make. First one, don't be too close to the boss. Those holes beneath the boss are traps. If someone steps on it, spikes will appear causing damage to anyone still stepping on it. Communicate with your team on which platform you would like to take during the boss's ult. That would lessen the confusion while inside the battle. The third one, decide for the best position that you will be comfortable to stand at by default. Some players prefer to stand at the left side of the front right stone wall because it's easy to dodge the geyser. Some players on the other hand want to stay at leftmost part of the map where the T geyser will appear. That's because that poison wave does not reach that part. So they just need to watch out for the T-Geyser. Don't dodge if you don't have to, especially when the tentacles have been activated. Reserve that dodge for really critical situation. Lastly, reserve your skills before the boss's HP reaches times 1, so that it will be easy for the party to cancel the boss's Venom Blast skill. So again, like what I have been always saying before, Aside from having stronger characters, this stage is about communications, coordination, and dodging skills. Now, the rest of the video is the actual fight our team had on the ruins of bravery. I hope you enjoy it. Also, please like this video and please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you'll get notified when I publish new videos. Thank you!